So guys what if Naruto was a phoenix god who went to the DXDS universe of movie? A pair of closed eyelids fluttered as the morning sun broke through the curtains and revealed the morning daylight, continuing to flutter the eyelids eventually opened and revealed a pair of blue eyes that shined like sapphires and stared up at the blank white ceiling. Tilting his head, the man looked at the alarm clock beside him and saw it read 9.30 before groaning, he grabbed a pillow and covered his face with it, trying to block out the sun. After a few minutes of silence, he let a loud sigh escape his mouth before he sat up forward and rubbed the sleepers out of his eyes. He was a young man in his early twenties with tanned skin and golden blonde hair that was kept short but was very spiky, he had a lean but muscular build that was built for both speed and power and at full height would stand around 61, along his right eye was a scar that went vertical and stopped above his cheek while a few more scars covered his chest and shoulder with one in particular still looking slightly red, indicating it was relatively new. He was Naruto Phoenix, eldest son of the current lord and lady of the Phoenix family, heir of the Phoenix and one of the great heroes of the Devil Civil War. Blinking and rubbing the sleepers out of his eyes, Naruto Fenig's gaze left his bed and traveled over to the window that showed the village of Geothorn, Netherlands, he put on his plain white t-shirt and exited his room and as soon as he did his face broke into a smile that can swoon any woman, he stretched his body and sat down on a big flat rock in a cross-legged style. Breathe in, breathe out, in, out. This was his daily morning routine, of course, he has no problem skipping it, but due to a certain incident it became a must for him to allocate some time to this activity to not let his emotions loose, and also, it really helped to get over that incident. And her, to be honest he did overcome that grief a long time ago thanks to certain foxy blonde, if it wasn't for her, he would probably not be alive, though he could go all good without meditating, there's no reason to erase one of the good activities in his daily life. A couple of teenage girls passed through his meditating spot and blushed heavily when they saw him, of course, he didn't react to it, he has already gotten used to it in his 200 years of life, he just waved at them which made them blush even more. Yar yar days, and just when he felt everything was peaceful, his face deadpanned and sighed. If there's one thing you are good at Azazel, it is finding no, stalking me. Naruto turned his face to his right to see a tall man appearing to be in his twenties with an average build, black hair, golden bangs, and a black goatee, he is Azazel, the leader of the fallen angles. Now now. That isn't a good way to say hello to a friend whom you met after a long time, Azazel said with a smile on his face. Uh, let me correct it, a friend who can solve things you can't and also when something big is happening. Azazel smiled, also that, Naruto got up, come on in, if you found me in the middle of nowhere, then things are getting hot. Azazel sighed heavily as he walked in, they both sat opposite each other on the couches, Azazel, who was smiling goofily when he came in turned serious all of a sudden and began to speak, in the last decade there has been a group beginning to form that could very easily pose a threat to not only the human world but the underworld and heaven as well, this group is a little different from the other sort of groups or factions that have been put together in the past. Naruto nodded slightly while listening to what the man had to say. The group is not just solely one species but made up multiple divisions, each which has a different species of creature occupying it. Angels, fallen angels, devils, strays, magicians, yokai, you name it they have all joined this group. He spoke seriously before his eyebrows shot up in surprise when he heard Naruto chuckle. From the sound of what you're describing I think I am correct when I say you were talking about the Chaos Brigade? He asked getting a bigger surprised look from Azazel. You know? He asked as Naruto snorted and rolled his eyes. Of course, I know, you don't think I would not know about a group like that getting together, after all, their lineup consists of pretty infamous and famous profiles, or so I heard. But how do you know them? Azazel asked as the blonde shrugged. They requested that I join obviously, his response got a shocked and somewhat fearful look all over which made the phoenix part wave his hand casually, come on, do you seriously think that he'll join that mixed species band or whatever? Azazel let out a heavy sigh and leaned back, Naruto was the last person he wants on his opposite team, even worse with the group they are facing, Azazel trusted a very limited number of people and Naruto was one of them, even Valley doesn't make the list. Not yet. I think your old amigos the four satans are starting to take note, I have seen Sirzex and Seraphal sending a portion of their peerage out increasingly more recently on recon missions, the activities of the Chaos Brigade are starting to get observable. Not surprising, Naruto spoke before turning to look forward again, so how is my old friend Sirzex? Azazel's heart skipped a beat when heard the blonde speak out his name, I only kept up to date on my family's well-being, from time to time I check in on my friends but those two I have left alone for some time stabbed anyone else in the back lately? Azazel winced at the bitter tone he spoke in, 
mentally fighting over whether he should tell him about a certain piece of information, it was not known publicly around the world but some selected higher-ups were aware of the situation between the three devils. What was the last you heard about Sirzex and Grafia? Azazel asked and noticed the twitch in the blonde's hand when he said her name. Only that he and Grafia were living a happy life as the mighty power couple of the underworld, about fifteen years or so I think. Then you should know they had a pretty big life-changing experience ten years ago, he said noticing his attention was now firmly on him. And what would that be exactly? Naruto asked trying to keep his emotionless mask on his face. Azazel sighed while rubbing the back of his head before he spoke, they had their firstborn ten years ago, a little boy I believe, he said and quickly noticed Naruto look away and saw his right hand was firmly grasping the earth beneath him and making cracks in the ground. After 200 he was not surprised that the wound still hurt, they fell quiet for a few moments as Azazel waited for the blonde to begin speaking. I see, what's the boy's name? He whispered, Milikas, they named him Milikas Gremory. Milikas huh? He said as his head gently nodded, that's a, that's a good name. Memories of him and Graphia cuddling in their then home flooded his brain for a fleeting moment but didn't phase him like it used to, once again, all thanks to a certain blonde yokai. It has been a while since I visited them, should go there one of these days. Naruto smiled, which surprised Azazel greatly, he looked at Azazel and continued. Anyway we're getting off track and that's not the reason why you came here after all. So why come to me with this information? Why me of all people? Well, that's easy. I don't know what their ultimate goal is yet but whatever it is it can't be good, especially if members of the old Satan faction get involved, he said as Naruto got a dark look on his face. If the old faction even try any of their old antics I will put them right back into the hole that they dare to crawl out of. Yes but even you can't do it alone, Azazel told seriously, from what I can tell they will target the underworld eventually, whether it's people or land a new potential war is brewing, the underworld will need you. Since when did you start caring about devils? I don't really, he said shrugging, but many of my brethren live in the underworld and you and I both know what war can cause, the pain, suffering and death it brings, I don't want to see another war break out, Naruto nodded, understanding what the fallen was saying. Meaning this could be the chance for our three sides to put our differences aside and make a real peace treaty and not this paper thin ceasefire that we have had for centuries, Naruto said noticing where the conversation was leading towards. In response, Azazel nodded, if we have any chance then the best way may be for the three factions to align. They spoke for five more minutes as Azazel explained it to Naruto who was half listening and half thinking about the information he is being told, if the old Satan faction really were making a move then he wanted to make sure they got put down on a more permanent basis. You should be taking this up with the Satans, not me, Naruto said as he got up and began walking towards the tent, as was about to enter he stopped and turned his head. But, I will keep my eyes open and I will at least think about the possibility of going back to the underworld, he said, he turned around to walk away but stopped when Azazel now spoke up. In that case you think you could do a favor for me? He asked getting Naruto's attention again, he looked at Azazel for a moment before nodding at him to keep speaking. There's a kid I want you to look at who recently became a devil, recently became a devil under Rias Gremory, he has a lot of potential and I have a feeling he is going to be right at the center of what's to come. You mean Hyodo Ise? Naruto asked nonchalantly. Azazel, who was surprised to hear the kid's name asked, how do you know him? Naruto still had the nonchalant look on his face, well it's been a while since I saw the last drag's partner, Azazel, I know you got a pretty good eye for people who can leave their mark in history, what's your reason for your confidence on a perverted teenager? Azazel stroked his goatee with a smile, well it ain't every day that a human with a longinus pops out, a rare one at that, adding to the fact that he barely has knowledge of the supernatural world and its norms, from what I heard he is a pretty easy going and kind guy, never have I ever heard that a red dragon emperor of those traits. Naruto looked at the sky for a moment and said, well if you have such confidence in him, I guess it wouldn't hurt to have a look. Azazel widened his eyes and was silent for a few seconds before speaking out, that's rare, for you to accept my crazy whims without much resistance. Naruto smirked, well it's been a while since I saw perverts who have great powers in them. Azazel returned the smirk, well, let's see what's to come, he turned away and opened his wings, and also, don't go and smack Sirzek's face out of nowhere, the last thing we need among this crisis is internal troubles amongst our allies. Naruto grinned, well I can't promise but let's see. Azazel could only hope that Naruto was joking and flew away. If a random Kuo resident looked up in the sky they would see a human-like figure floating, well, that's considering they can see through his veil, it was none other than Naruto Fenix, the heir of the Fenix clan in the underworld. 
such a normal looking town, definitely not a place one would expect would be center of something out of this world, Naruto said to himself, and between all of this normal landscape, one building stood out. Kuoh Academy so, this is that asshole's school huh? Naruto murmured to himself as he floated towards the school slowly, with my dislike for schools and top of that his family's school, never thought I would have such a dislike against a place of all things. Then Naruto remembered Azazel's request, well, before getting home, why don't I check out Azazel's new interest point, and as soon as he thought that he heard a scream from the left block of the school, and he would recognize that scream anyway, it was the pervert's scream. Well, there's our cue, line break, time skip for one hour. Well, that's disappointing, not that I am surprised though, Naruto said to himself as he walked through the streets of Kuo. He observed Issei all day and was forced to watch Sirzek's exact female copy, his sister Rias and her peerage as Issei was already recruited, he certainly thought he would watch something interesting it on the basis, considering the group consists of a hybrid fallen angel, knight of the holy demonic sword, a nekosho, a princess with the power of destruction, and finally the infamous red dragon emperor. But no, for fuck's sake, what are they even doing? Drinking tea after sitting down in the same place for six hours? Where's the training? Where's the discipline? Naruto fumed, drawing looks from around though they didn't mind because he is a bishonin, he certainly understood how Sasuke felt in his teens. Naruto sighed heavily, what am I getting furious for? They are the last group I want to be with since they are with him, but that attitude ticks me off. If Sakura Chan were here, his voice softly trailed off as he remembered Sakura, his mood suddenly damped at the thought of his old teammate. Why the heck I am brooding? I don't regret pushing Sasuke and Sakura out of the portal's way, but sometimes, I really want to see them. It's been 300 years since the damned portal opened up in the final valley, just after he and Sasuke finished their fight, he, Sakura and Sasuke were smiling like the times when they were genin, though he was still a genin then, all of a sudden, the space in that area distorted and of course Naruto being Naruto, he pushed both of them away to the side letting him be the only one being sucked into the portal. And to his surprise when he woke up, he was in the middle of what he thought was a huge barren land. And worst of all, he was reduced to his seven year form. Fortunately with his arm intact, that's when he saw a burly man pointing his spear at a blonde woman who was slightly injured. Thanks to his battle awareness, he understood that the lady was powerful and wouldn't have interfered until that man gulped a certain pill, the increase in his power and aura was so rapid that the lady didn't know how to react and by the time she knew what was happening, Naruto was in front of her, defending an attack from the a short tussle, he rassing in the man, and the blonde woman was none other than Layla Phoenix. He was dropped into a raiding game arena, which by his luck's grace wasn't broadcasted then as Layla's team was facing a newbie. The burly man was later arrested for the usage of performance enhancing drugs along with the officials who allowed them to carry it in the first place. Well long story short, Layla who was young by devil's standards by that time was just married and her maternal instincts screamed to take Naruto into her care and Lord Fenix. Was surprisingly very supportive of that decision, of course, when they found out that he was not a devil, they were pretty shocked, but never did they think of leaving him, Layla used to feel sad whenever she thought about his lifespan. But what other shocking factor they found out is that his lifeline is almost equal, or even greater than Devil's, which made both of the Phoenix very happy. And so went on his life, him meeting Sirzex, Seraphal, Ajuka, Falbium, and other great pillars, he used to and still draws people near him like a moth to the flame, his friendship with others especially Sirzex grew stronger as they began to address many issues in the underworld together. But his absolute peak came during the civil war, the way he formed strategies, led forces to attack, and also how to attack so that there will be fewer casualties baffled the anti satan faction, his morale itself was enough for his allies to take action without any doubts. And that's when he met her, Graphia Lucifuge, who was then fighting for the old satan faction, with Ajuka leading another squadron, Sirzex and Naruto were left to fight her, Sirzex might have had more firepower but Graphia too had an excellent amount of arsenal and strategies, along with how Sirzex was also injured, it made it easier for her almost kill him, there wasn't a day where he didn't think why he stopped her. If it wasn't for Naruto, Graphia would have gone down with the old Satan faction, he somehow convinced her to come to their side, which she did after some hard convincing, and by this time, Naruto already had a younger brother, Ruval. Ruval rarely left Naruto's side when he was home, this made Layla and Ronald, Lord Fenix, tear up whenever they saw them, Naruto, who was foreign to this familial affection was all but happy when he had a family who cared about him, and it was during these times, that Naruto grew feeling for her and asked Graphia out and she didn't even let him complete his sentence and said, yes, as if she was waiting for him to ask. To say they were a hit was keeping it light, they were a famous couple then, 
and everyone was convinced that they would get married, and also it was during that time that the elections for the Maos started, everyone knew Naruto would be the default choice since he led them to victory with very less casualties, the other seats were also a no-brainer, Seraphal, Ajuka, and Falbium, but what shocked everyone was when Naruto nominated Seerzex as the Satan. Of course, almost everyone had no problem but they preferred Naruto to take up the title which Naruto wasn't willing to thanks to his situation, but never expressed his true thoughts, he gave a good speech about how Seerzex was the correct fit instead of him and finally, the seat went to him. And by this time, Graphia and Naruto went further into their relationship, they built a house and indulged in carnal activities almost every day, to Naruto, Graphia was the love of his life, a thing which he had barely got in the elemental nations for the majority of his life, except Hanada, whiskered asshole realized that poor girl was in love with him only after living 150 years, everything was going well, so well, that he prepared to take on of the biggest decisions in his life. Line break. Mom, do you think she will accept it? Asked a nervous Naruto to Layla who was combing his unkempt hair. Layla was silent for a moment and then began to giggle. To think I would see you nervous, I've seen everything in my life now, said Layla who was still giggling. Naruto groaned, I mean, I have zero experience in this department, I never proposed to a girl, nor any girl except her had an interest in me so don't blame me Datbeo. Layla who was giggling up till then suddenly stopped and threw a deadpan look at Naruto. What? Layla sighed, thanks Satan no females in the underworld heard you saying it, it's gonna break their poor hearts. Naruto looked confused, why? Do they have a heart problem? A, N, Todoroki's line from BNHA. Asterisk Layla's deadpan intensifies yeah, really thanks Satan nobody heard it, Layla's expression returned to normal, and began to speak in her motherly voice, Naruto. I can't even think of any reasons why she may reject your proposal and that's considering she's gonna reject you, it's Graphia we are talking about. That girl fell for you ages ago, and of course, you didn't notice it, come on don't fumble at the finish line. Naruto was kind of taken back when heard about him being a dense part but then his nerves cooled down when he heard about Graphia falling for him long before he asked her out. And when he thought about it, he wanted to facepalm with all his might when he remembered how Graphia showed her vulnerable side only to him he gently smiled and took out a small box from his pocket, and in that was a little silver stoned ring, which was shining brightly in the room lights, Layla slightly gasped at that sight. Naruto is that, her voice slowly trailed off as she figured out what that stone was. Yes mom, it is what you thought it, Naruto passed the box to Layla, the moonstone. How in the world did you get it? Layla asked in a shocked tone. Well, I know a guy who knows a guy, Naruto said smugly, Layla threw him a want me to puke the truth out look which made him say, well I cashed in a favor from Agara's household, they are in charge of catching fugitives and also I got to know about the raw moonstone that was captured in one of their operations and I simply asked them. Agara's? Layla asked, why do they owe you a favor? Secret and I am not telling you even if you threaten me. Oh really, ah too bad then, I thought to cook your favorite ramen today though, Layla spoke to herself innocently. I S A V E D T H E I R D A U G H T E R F R O M A G R O U P O F S T R A Y S Naruto blurted out. Layla smiled smugly as she heard his answer, she knew all his weak points after all, you mean you saved that Sikh very Meredith? Layla softened, thanks Satan you saved her, she is a very gentle and humble girl, so, when are you going to give this to Graphia? Naruto smiled and said, I am thinking today, to which Layla giggled and said, got back your confidence I see, good luck son, though I think you want need it. Thanks, mom and by the way, Naruto faced her and asked with sparkling eyes, when are gonna make it? Make what? Layla asked, ramen, Naruto's whole face was sparkling now. Era, did I say such a thing? Layla took her hand fan and covered her mouth while saying it. Naruto's face was ready to go into six paths crying mode, not fair d-a-t-t-e-b-a-y-o-o-o-o. Naruto just got to his new home, which was a normal, average looking one, he was never one for extravagant things, a trait which is supported by a bag in his hands, filled up to the top by just ramen. Yeah, this is what I am talking about, it's been years since I had instant ramen, cooed Naruto as he started to heat the water, he sat on the chair and looked at the ramen cup as if it were his meal in a week, the kettle's light turned off, indicating the water has been heated up and he quickly worked his way through to fill up the water to cook it, he took the spoon and inhaled the vapors coming out of it. Inhales asterisk ha. This is it. This is what I was waiting for, and he began to slurp down the cup and in a few seconds, he took it down, and he did the same until he took down four more cups, 
Naruto leaned down and patted his imaginary plump stomach, damn hadn't felt this in years, Japan's ramen hit different after all. After that incident, Naruto didn't want to stay near Japan or anywhere near it, after all, it was one of the places where the devils have high territory, and due to that, he had to survive without the authentic ramen, for years to come, of course, there was ramen in the countries he used to live in, but as the famous saying goes, they were fucking bland, can't blame him, it was a huge downgrade from Tuchi's ramen. Naruto got up and went into the bathroom to have a shower, he switched the temperature to normal cool and let it run down his body, his body relaxed as he inhaled and exhaled consistently, and as he was doing it, his sight ran down to his bare chiseled stomach, where used to be some writings and symbols, his hand ran through it as his memories began to circulate again. Flashback. At the final valley of death, I've altered the story, where Sasuke releases all tailed beasts from his genjutsu and they release the infinite Tsukiyomi before collapsing down to have a laugh and reunion. As Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura were smiling as they used to after the battle with Sasuke, Naruto, the best sensory type ninja, sensed a disturbance, and what happened after that was a quick series of actions as Naruto, created an expanded arm out of his where used to be right arm and threw Sasuke and Sakura away towards the side, Sasuke, who saw the distortion behind Naruto was too late to see it as he extended Suzano's arm, which was never going to reach him. Kakashi and Sakura only looked upon with shock and pained expressions as Kakashi couldn't use Kamui anymore and Sakura was still reeling from that shock and weariness of Sasuke's genjutsu healing Obito, Sasuke, and Naruto all in an hour, all Naruto could see was his teammates' final expressions as he was pulled into that distortion, after that, his body gave in to the weariness from the continuous battling of cage and god-level creatures for two days. Naruto slowly opened his eyes and got up, though his vision was still fuzzy he could see where he was, and in no way did he know where it was, no, it's more like he hadn't seen any of the architecture or the place around him and this was coming from a guy who has been to many places of excellent architecture, and then his mind slowly processed what happened before he passed out and sighed in relief. Oi, Kurama, where the hell are we? Asked Naruto no answer. Oi Kurama, where are we? Naruto's tone pitched up, and before he could shout again, a sense of emptiness went through him, and soon after that, he closed his eyes to enter into his mindscape, and the sight before him was all tailed beasts slowly fading away in a vapor form. Oh, he is here, Shukaku called out, Naruto, God, you woke up. Naruto-chan are you alright? Damn I was worried we were gonna leave without saying goodbye. Naruto was too shocked to say due to what was happening before him, Kurama observed it and spoke out, Naruto. Naruto turned toward Kurama, with his eyes glossing up, K Kurama, W what is happening to you guys? Kurama whose bright orange was fading away slightly now spoke up, Naruto you remember what happened after the fight? Naruto nodded. Kurama continued, well that distortion which sucked you up wasn't normal by any standards, what we deduced is that due to high level powers concentrated in one area for long periods, the space was distorted. But, what does that got to do with you guys fading away? Asked a worried Naruto as he was getting anxious by the minute. Let me finish, I'll keep it simple, the portal through which you came through brought you to a new dimension, a dimension similar to our world. Kurama stopped to see if Naruto react but he didn't, considering the scene before him, he continued, the journey through that distortion wasn't something humans can endure, even Sasuke would have died if he had been pulled through. Naruto couldn't contain himself anymore, Kurama. I don't care about all that. Why are you guys disappearing? And slowly tears started to form in his eyes. Kurama sighed, Naruto, it took all of our combined powers to shield you through the journey, and thanks to your best friend, we were drained of our chakra which is eventually leading to this. Naruto's eyes widened as his dreaded thought came true, and before he could open his mouth, Son Goku spoke up. Now now, we are not dying Naruto's eyes who were ready to unleash the tears suddenly stopped, eh? Gyuki laughed and said, you thought we were going to die? Come on boy. Naruto smiled but his expression turned anxious before speaking up, then why are you guys fading away? This time Isobu spoke up, well, what was it? Yes, we are fading away because we are injecting our chakra into you for the time being, Naruto was confused, which Kakuo saw and spoke up, what he meant was, we are beings of chakra who cannot die, since we are in a different dimension, we are injecting our chakra into you so that we can be revived within you. Naruto's face scrunched up in confusion for a minute and then lightened up, okay, now I get it. Kurama sighed, Naruto don't be reckless in here alright? Of course, we are gonna come back and that's if you were alive, I doubt it would take more time since you have large reserves but don't bet on it, and finally, don't slack around, if you slack, the longer it would take for us to be revived. 
Naruto smiled and answered, No problem Karama. I promise that I will help you guys to come back as soon as possible. I will now keep my promise. And before Naruto could speak anything, Karama spoke up, Because that's your ninja way, right? Naruto's eyes widened before smiling again, Yes. To which Karama smiled back which was the same for all the tailed beasts in there, and then all of them started to fade completely now, and just before they could disappear all of them waved at him. End of flashback Naruto got out of the shower and began to wipe himself while facing the mirror. His mood was grim because of what has been lingering in his mind, the revival of the tailed beasts. Though Karama had said that they will be back, it's been 300 years since it happened, Naruto gained a good life force and natural control over the five elements, his arsenal which was already packed was now stuffed, since he turned into a kid when he was thrown here, he had to adapt to a new family, people, supernaturals, and war. The tailed beasts were just in the back of his head, until Graphia. Since they comforted him by saying that they will return. He was passive regarding them, which was very unlike him. That signifies how his new family and love life affected him, and it was when he got out of the underworld, that it came onto him like a wave crashing. He forgot about the tailed beasts, that guilt weighed over the anger due to betrayal, which made him unstable for some time until he decided to help them to come back, though he didn't know how. That is one of the reasons why he meditates, as peace of mind and body make the charka flow more potent. Line break. The days went on as Naruto observed the Red Dragon Emperor and his king's peerage. He would be lying if he said he wasn't interested in how this Hyodo Issei will take things forward. Being the most naive devil there ever was, after all. He too shared the same sentiment back in Elemental Nation when he was a kid, even now, though he won't accept it, and as for the Gremory peerage, well he could easily tell how every one of them has some heavy pasts which they are not willing to show, he grimaced how their faces bought back the memories of himself trying to cheer up though he was scorned across the village, and also how Sai was during the initial stages of their relationship. Though his old habits almost forced him to talk to them, he didn't, he lived too long to understand that these are matters which cannot one go and soothe them just because they feel pity or feel obliged to, it's a form of disrespect. He sighed, what will you do in this world of abnormality huh? Hyodo Issei? And it was when thinking about traumas that two certain blondes came into his mind, which instantly turned his frowning mouth into a warm smile as well as his mood. Well, it has been a while since I meet them anyways. Line break. In a traditional Japanese decor room, a beautiful blonde woman was rotating her neck and squeezing them, the striking and eye-catching feature besides her beauty is her nine tails, she is Yusaka, the nine-tailed Yukai Kitsune and the leader of the Yukai faction. Yusaka let out a huge sigh as if she just arrived home after a long day of work, in all fairness, it wouldn't be a lie to say that she has been dealing with pretty hectic work which does all fairness to the work stressed out, and half of it was thanks to the infamous hero faction. And another of her worries is that she has been spending less time with her only daughter. Kuno, it is bad that she spends less time with her even on regular days and now it's even worse, by the time she completes her work and meetings, her daughter would already be asleep and she has to get to work before her daughter wakes up. She heard it and saw with her own eyes how kids without parents' interaction during their childhood turn out and most of the time, it isn't good, and top it all off she doesn't know who her father is. Her solemnly still expression changed after a couple of seconds when the thought of Kuna's father came into her mind and unconsciously, her lips curled up, her straight posture slopped down as she reminisced a particular memory which she thinks about it every time he comes into her thoughts, which was every day. Yusaka-chan, as I am now I am not worthy of your feelings, but, I will make myself one and until then, please wait for me. She giggled and squirmed as she remembered his cute red face when he said those words, and all of a sudden, her body was wrapped up in a blanket of warmth, slowly, her pent-up mind stress and weariness evaporated as if they were never there, she perfectly knows who is the cause of this, who is currently wrapping his hands around her waist and his head leaning on her shoulder. Welcome home, dear I am home, replied Naruto with one of the warmest smiles, Yasaka felt butterflies in her stomach when she felt Naruto's aura and his warm smile made her and it is as if all her thoughts weighing down on her a minute ago weren't even there, Yasaka tilted her head, enough to rest it on Naruto's head. How are you Naruto-kun? asked Yasaka in an all-sweet alluring voice. Naruto, who was busy enjoying her presence replied, didn't know how I was a couple of minutes ago, but definitely more than good now. Yasaka smiled as she began to wrap her fluffy nine tail around him, really? And why is that? Naruto slightly tightened his hug and answered, I don't know, maybe a beautiful, seductive looking woman who has allured me for several decades. Yusaka couldn't hold it in anymore and took his face in her hands and kissed him, intensely. This is what happens when you tease a woman who is head over heels for you, gentlemen, not that I can relate. Yusaka pulled back from the kiss, 
With her dignified looking face looking all reddish and strands of hair covering her eyes, Naruto's face too reddened, and was the first one to speak out, someone was missing me. Yasaka slightly pouted and replied, and whose fault do you think it is? Naruto's face slightly drooped and nervously chuckled, fair enough. Yusaka's face returned to normal and smiled again. Don't be like that, didn't you say you will definitely overcome your past, after all? I don't go back on my word, that's my way of life, Naruto said with his trademark confident face. Yusaka's smiling face was slightly reddened, after all this was the look that made her fall into the cage called love years ago, and she was more than willing to be locked forever. Good, so, what's with the sudden visit? Not that I am complaining though. Naruto rubbed the back of his head while replying, nothing extraordinary, for some, I've wanted to see the two most important women in my life and visited right away. Oh okay, now out with the truth, Yusaka replied back as she saw through his sheepish expression, Naruto weakly laughed and said, it is true, but, I also had some things on my mind that I felt would be best to discuss with you. Who? Well I am all ears, let out what's in your heart. So let me get this straight, Azazel asked you to keep an eye on the Red Dragon Emperor, who is part of its sister peerage, and, you found out that your so-called ex and close friend had a baby, and also, the hero faction which has been causing me troubles day and night as part of a bigger faction. In a nutshell, yes Yusaka's face grew slightly stern as Naruto narrated his story and it took an uphill peak when she heard the part about where Sirzex and Graphia had a kid, she always feels bitter when any topic of theirs is introduced near her. So, how are you feeling? Yusaka asked. What do you mean? asked a confused Naruto. Don't play dumb, I am asking how are you feeling about the Sirzex and Graphia having a kid? Yusaka's voice grew slightly loud and her expression grew even sterner. This is why she hates to talk about this topic, she loves Naruto so much that she can't forgive what they both had done, and moreover, she is in the assumption that Naruto still holds some feelings toward Graphia, while she is there for him, her jealousy is fueled by her animal instinct of hers, thanks to the Kitsune bloodline of hers. But to her surprise, Naruto started to giggle, what's so funny? And nothing, I think this is the first time I saw Yusaka-chan so jealous. Yusaka pouted, flattery won't get you anywhere without answering my question. Naruto slowly stopped giggling, Yusaka-chan is so intelligent and calm but even she can be silly sometimes huh? Yusaka slammed the table, why are you not answering my coup? Why should I feel jealous when I got you both? Yusaka couldn't comprehend what was happening for a minute and when she did, her face slightly reddened and let out a sound. A. Naruto smiled, it's true that I felt some kind of pain when I heard about it, in fact, that thought itself sucked me into some kind of abyss, but it's then that you both came into my mind and pulled me back, it may sound cringe, but it is true. Yusaka's eyes began to water as she heard Naruto, he took her into his arms once again. Yusaka-chan, I love you, okay. Listen to me carefully because I know foxes can be ignorant, I fucking love you, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here, if it wasn't for you I would have long forgotten that there were more important things in life I need to do, and I will ever be grateful for what have you given me the most thing I wanted more than ever, a family, if you think I would still leave you for that backstabber, you will need to check that pretty head of yours. Yusaka's face was buried in Naruto's chest and he couldn't see her and when he pulled her back to get a good angle of her face, his heart skipped a beat, his beloved's face is all red and her eyes were teary. Before he could say anything, Yusaka pulled him into a strong kiss. A couple of hot minutes later, Naruto and Yusaka settled down after a good long hot kiss. Damn Yusaka chan, since when you got more dominant? asked a panting Naruto, which can raise some eyebrows because his physical attributes are second to none. Yusaka's, whose face was still red but reverting back to its normal color, giggled and said, Blame yourself for saying such flattering words. Naruto smiled and before he could say anything, he heard little footsteps coming toward their room. Naruto's lips curled up in anticipation as he heard those sounds, and as soon as the door slide opened, a yellow blur was all he could see until it crashed into him, well, he could see it but welcomed it right into his arms. Papa. Naruto couldn't help but smile and ruffle the blonde hair of the girl who was giving him the hardest hug she could, and moreover, her strikingly similar yellow nine tails were wagging continuously in all directions, Yusaka too couldn't help but smile at the scene before her but quickly regained her normal composure. Kuno, you should nt jump onto people like that, it's not something a lady does. Kuno tilted her face which was buried in her father's chest towards her mother and pouted, sorry, mother. Naruto laughed and said, now, Yasaka-chan don't be like that, Kuno can be like that when she becomes a lady, but now, she is just my little girl. Kuno smiled and buried her face into her father's chest, before giving him another pouted look, 
this time an angry one. I am not a little girl, I am a lady. Then why did you jump when it's not ladylike? Naruto replied back with a mischievous smile, Kuno couldn't retort back and pouted her face to its limit before turning back with her hands folded. HMPH. Wait wait Kuno-chan, you are a lady. Yes you are the most ladylike lady in this whole world. Naruto decided to go back on his retort as soon as he could, he couldn't bear with the thought of his daughter being angry with him, and it was Kuna's turn to give him a mischievous smile. Naruto realized he fell for it, scooped her in his arms, and began to tickle her. Ha ha ha, s stop, it pee papa, Kuno couldn't begin to bear the tickles and started to plead with Naruto to stop between her laughs. Yusaka saw the scene playing before her and couldn't help but smile with peace in her heart, the worries she has been experiencing a few minutes ago felt like forever ago, right now, she just wants her family and herself to be like this. And also, she has to discipline both kids in front of her. A few more tickles and scoldings later. Look at her, hard to believe she was energetic just an hour ago, said Naruto as he pats an asleep Kuno in his lap. Well, she doesn't get to play with her father every day, she burned herself out, said Yusaka as she rested her head on Naruto's shoulder. As for Naruto, he is the happiest man on earth, he now has something which he longed for since his childhood, a family, during his childhood, when the evening playtime was over, his friend's parents used to walk back to their homes with their children and at that time, all he felt was loneliness, it's one of the few things he wishes none of the people in this world should experience, but only if the world were that easy. Naruto met Yusaka a short while after he left the underworld. That was when he was heartbroken, betrayed, and in pain. In short, he felt what Sasuke felt except the heartbreak was for not only his closest friend but also his lover. He thought kept on changing countries so that the underworld or Azazel can't catch the whiff of him, and it's when he was in Kyoto, that he was mixed up with some Yukai groups which were responsible for some rebellions against the East Yukai factions, he always used to roam around in Henge, and that was when he met a young Yusaka, he walked into a trap set for the rebels and he and Yusaka had a huge fight, of course Naruto won and Yusaka, who was gravely injured thought her life was over. And that was when fate tied them together, Naruto, who had no interest in killing her immediately healed her and was about to leave when Yusaka forced him to accept her hospitality. But Naruto couldn't. A fight between the then high-class power Yusaka and Naruto did catch the interest of many factions, so he couldn't be there, he promised that he would come after a couple of weeks and left, and he did, which surprised Yusaka, at first, their relationship was awkward, at least that was what Yusaka felt, he used to be moody almost all the time. To give a good example, he was almost how he was when he found out that Jiraiya was dead. Not to that extent, but comparable, but that didn't last for long. Yusaka and Naruto worked on the internal struggles between the East and the West. Naruto, whose true nature didn't change, came out when people needed help. That side of Naruto was completely new for her, unlike the gloomy and awkward one she used to see every day. He looked like someone who knew what the people in need were feeling and helped them. And one more mysterious thing she found about him is that he could use chakra, the source of yukais which was only found in her kind was in him, a human, and what's surprising is that it was more potent, lively than hers, Naruto began to mystify her more and more every day, and the final knock came when she found out his true face and name. As said earlier, Naruto used to roam in Henge, and that Henge was very much like Kakashi's, except the hair is black, and his name which was known all around the world came much of a shock to her and she found this out by mistake when Naruto was beginning to relax around Yusaka and lost his concentration subconsciously and reverted back to his normal experience. Of course this didn't sit right with her, he was the first male beside her father whom she opened up to, and he didn't even trust her enough to show his real face and name, being a young woman and having a good fox characteristic, she blocked Naruto, Naruto cursed himself for not trusting her and slowly reverted back to his normal self and began to make his silly moves to make Yusaka talk, and of course, he succeeded. That incident drew them closer and in no time, one thing led to another and one day, they made love, and it was then Naruto opened up to her about his past, including the part where he is from another universe, she was the first person besides her family to know about this, and fortunately, this made him and Yusaka closer, Naruto found himself healing every second he is with her. And that is when the second love of his life came in. The pregnancy caught all of the supernatural world by surprise, Yusaka was a famous figure and not only that, but many famous names were also very interested to make her their woman, but not only they heard nothing of her partner's name, but she was also pregnant. It created some noise for quite a long time, some men directly met her to find out about her partner or whether the whole pregnancy thing is a lie. But after a few months, the bump in her stomach made it all clear. And all this time, Naruto was near Yusaka, 
being in henge and making sure that not even a mosquito tried to do anything to Yasaka, he couldn't risk making the world acknowledge him as Yasaka's husband as that was the time when the things in the underworld were troubling and his enemies, though couldn't beat him might hurt his loved ones, his Fenix family is more than strong to protect themselves, but still, he kept eyes on them, his main concern was Yasaka. She couldn't risk getting into a battle in her pregnancy and the chances of her getting into one would have increased if the world has known that she was his woman, so he hid in disguises and helped out Yasaka in every possible way, Yasaka hired some reliable helpers to help her with things Naruto couldn't do. And then came the day on the day of Kuna's birth all the housekeepers and helpers stood on standby near the room where Yasaka was resting, reason. It was the expected day of birth, some experienced housemaids were working alongside the doctors in the labor room as Yasaka's grunts of pain can be heard, the maids outside, who were expecting loud crying noises from Yusaka were surprised when the voice of pain didn't go further than the grunts. It was all thanks to one of the maids who was in charge of massaging Yusaka's palms, it was Naruto in disguise as a maid who helped Yusaka to reduce the stress on her body, at first, he was very nervous to go in but as soon as he heard Yusaka's grunts, he couldn't help himself and changed into a maid who was to massage Yusaka to reduce her pain. He released his chakra at enough intervals so that the Yusaka could push the baby out and at the same time, can be bare the pain. And when he saw the doctor's hands which were carrying a very little infant, his world went blank. It's a girl, congratulations Yusaka-sama, after all the necessaries to rest the baby and Yusaka were done, they were all sent out, except that one maid, and as soon as the doors closed, Naruto gently hugged Yusaka's resting head and kissed her on her forehead, Yusaka could feel warm water droplets on her forehead and it was enough for her to shed some emotional tears as well. Naruto gently rested Yusaka's head on the bed and scooped the baby, he felt as if the world is really simple, he thought all of his past troubles were not even worth thinking about in comparison to the bundle of joy in his hands, right from then, he had only one purpose, to protect the two best women of his life. Slowly, the congratulations started to pour in, big name people visited her in person and wished her and the baby a good life, God knows what their intentions were, but too bad he was dead, Naruto, who had the ability to sense people's emotions was on standby near Yusaka during every outsider's visits in case of any trouble, many men were oozing jealousy while some others were already thinking of arranging their boy's marriage in hand with the baby. He only chuckled at how fucked up the nature of the world was. All those times, he was in henge and was on his feet, only when everyone was resting, he would go up and cuddle with his little girl and Yusaka, the only feeling that came close to that was when he has ramen, then one day. Kuno Kuno? Sounds good but its meaning is not too pleasing, Yusaka said with her hand on her child's arm. I know, one of its meanings is suffering, but that is why I think this is perfect, our child will overcome any obstacles, sufferings, and pain, just like we both did, her name will be the proof of it, what do y'all think? Asked Naruto with his hand ruffling Yusaka's hair. As soon as Yusaka heard Naruto's reason, her face bloomed with a smile, she nudged her baby's nose slightly. Kuno, our child's name is Kuno. Naruto smiled in response, but then. By the way, what will we be her last name? I know you don't intend to use Phoenix yet, but what about your blood name? Naruto who was then ruffling his baby's soft hair stopped abruptly at Yusaka's question, but quickly solved it. Her name will be just Kuno, for now, when the time comes, it'll tell you. Yusaka didn't have any objections and enjoyed her mom's affectionate ruffling of her hair. And just when things were going good for him, Naruto Phoenix, join me to help my cause. One sudden day, a little girl appeared near their home and uttered these words, the moment he saw her, Naruto knew she was nowhere at the level he fought before, he only felt that feeling when he saw Jubi Obito, Madara, all versions of him, dudes a menace, and Kagaya for the first time, it was Ophis, the Oberus dragon. And if I reject, you have no such choice, Ophis maintained her neutral expression while releasing killing intent. Naruto was ready to take her on without knowing the odds but, he couldn't, his beloved was still in a recovery state and his baby was just some days old, though there were no problems since her birth, he still wanted to have guaranteed protection for them. Okay, count me in, then let but I will join you seven months from now, don't ask me for reasons because I won't indulge you with those, but meet me here seven months from now and I'll come with you, and also, please don't send anyone to spy on me, I won't even waste half a breath before killing them. Naruto planned to stay till his baby is one year old and Yusaka was fully recovered and also to make sure none of the supernaturals find out that he is the father of Kuno for that period of time, then he can have a free reign of action without leaving his family vulnerable, Ophis pondered for a bit before accepting. Okay, I'll accept you conditions, I'll meet you seven months from now. Well, it's not that he can escape from me anyway, with Yusaka and Kuno after his meeting with Ophis. 
Yusaka hugged Naruto very tightly as if saying she was glad that nothing happened to him. Naruto just smiled and returned the hug and sent some of his chakra into her, but soon then, his face turned serious. Yusaka chan, will you please hear me out? Yusaka, who was in his chest the whole time, looked up. I am planning to leave you guys for a while. Yusaka didn't react immediately to his words, but as soon as she comprehended what he said, her eyes widened and her lips began to tremble. W what do you mean, Naruto kun? D don't tell me you were going to join that faction. Naruto sighed and explained in detail, he was about to do it a few minutes ago when he told her that he encountered Ophis, but before he could say anything she latched onto him. I will stay with you for seven months, then, I'll deal with her. Deal with her. She is the second most powerful being in the universe Naruto how. Well good for you. Cause I am not from this universe, Naruto said with a cheeky smile. Yusaka tried to retort but couldn't, that's the power of her beloved smile, and she believed in him. Now as Kuno is asleep, my dear, don't you think you have something overdue? Yusaka asked with a bright smile. Overdue? I do. Naruto asked if he had no idea what Yusaka is talking about. Yusaka maintained that smiley figure for a couple more seconds, as if in anticipation that Naruto would figure it out, and all of a sudden, Naruto was pulled into a strong kiss, Yusaka's tails were entwined around his body tightly and her lips and tongue are working rapidly, after a good few, hot, minutes, Naruto pulled out of the kiss and unlike last time, he was gasping. Damn Yusaka-chan, you beat me, unlike Naruto, Yusaka was panting slightly but still had that seductive smile. What? You don't to pay what's overdue? Naruto shook his head as fast as he could. It's a fair duty to pay back what's deserved, but as you have been a good, beautiful, amazing and whatnot, ill pay back tenfold, and as soon as he finished his words, he scooped Yusaka into his arms and walked towards the bedroom while kissing her again. After a long long night of payback, Naruto woke up the next morning with a slight groan, he chuckled at his state, because it's not that every day he gets beaten at his stamina game, and also, those were one of the many things he wishes to have once he settles down, he woke up, did all the morning activities and met Yusaka in her office chamber. Yusaka gave Naruto a cheeky smile when he entered. Did you sleep well? Naruto chuckled and answered, I did, too well actually, thanks to a certain someone who drained my well-reputed stamina. Yusaka's face slightly reddened before answering, W well, I couldn't help it. I have pent up stress, both mentally and sexually since forever, and you know how I lose it when that happens. Ha ha, I know, by the way, I got something to tell you, Naruto said. What is it? Yusaka was forced herself upright when she saw Naruto's goofy face suddenly turn serious. I, I'm going to return to the underworld, Yusaka's reaction well justified how serious that sentence is, her eyes widened and her mouth slightly opened, after calming down for a few seconds, will you be alright? Naruto smiled at her reply, he thought she would have reacted in a way how she did yesterday, I told you yesterday, that matters are turning serious, and once those jerks gain momentum, it will be hard to stop considering how broken apart the leaders are in the underworld, and also, I might find some info about that hero faction which are troubling you. Yusaka was lost in thought for a minute before, okay, but be careful, if you even don't feel a little bit good when you see them, come to us immediately. Yes, yes, as you say my queen, and suddenly the sliding door was opened, revealing a teary kuno, she threw herself into her father's chest. Papa don't go. Naruto forced a smile and patted her head, kuno. Don't worry I'll be back soon, believe it, even he hates it when he has to part from his daughter every time. Kuno nodded her head in disagreement, no, you always say that, but you won't see me for a long time, I know Papa is lying, and continued to hug his chest tightly. Naruto wanted to facepalm at his daughter's words because they are true, every time he visited, he would take a long time before doing it again, Yusaka though put up a sad face as if wanting to pull back Kuno, inside she too wanted her daughter to pester Naruto until he stays. Naruto took a deep breath before, okay Kuno, let's do a thing, and he took out some thin parchments and borrowed some ink and a pen, he scribbled down some writings before handing it to Kuno, I will be back by next month, if I don't, just inject your chakra into this parchment, and it'll be in front of you the next second. Kuno looked at the parchment and stared at it for a few minutes before releasing Naruto and sitting on Yusaka's lap, she closed her eyes so that she wouldn't witness her father going away, again. Yusaka petted Kuna's head and looked at Naruto slightly distressed, before she could say anything, Naruto kissed her forehead and whispered in her ears, just wait one more month Yusaka-chan. Yusaka was in a daze from the kiss and from what Naruto whispered, but before she could break out of it, he was gone. In the underworld. Damn, no matter how many years I've been here, 
The sky still gives me the creeps, Naruto mutters as he looks around the place he was in. After leaving Yusaka, he immediately entered the underworld, without even considering the fact that it's the first time since his sister's birth that he is in the underworld. Of course, even then he was in disguise and even left some gifts, after all, his parents wouldn't leave him alone if he is seen and, he wasn't ready to come back to the underworld back then. Well, here we go. Naruto's form flickers as if he was a distortion, and appears in front of a huge compound with a golden crest on its front porch. The guards on duty were late to see his form and when they did, they got into a battle stance. Who's there? Answer now or face the consequences. They couldn't see it due to the dust in front of them and suddenly they heard a burst of laughter. Ha 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 ha. Can't believe you said the same words when I first met you. The guards were confused but their faces lit up in astonishment as the dust cleared out to reveal the person behind the voice. Young master. They both ran towards him and knelt down, Naruto chuckled and lifted them. Again you go with that young master, I told you to call me Naruto, I ain't no young or master. The guards chuckled and then, young master, it's been years since we saw you, all of us and especially, Lord Fenix and Lady Fenix are the ones most affected, every day, they would send agents out in search of you, no matter what the situation is. Naruto gave a distressed smile at them, he knew what his parents were doing every day regarding his disappearance, it hurt him a lot to see their efforts for him, but he wasn't in a good state to face them, it was also one of the reasons why he didn't stay in one place for too long. I know, but that ends now, Naruto said with his trademark confident smile. Both of the guards' faces broke into a smile as well, they both are the first people besides his parents to see him, they were hostile at first, which was partly due to him scaring them with his speed, but slowly, they began to talk and chat every day. Okay G chans, ill get going now, wish me luck, Naruto said as he entered the compound. No matter how many times I see this but damn this castle has an extravagant look outside, Naruto thought to himself as he entered the compound and looked at the huge mansion before him. It's the Fenix household's mansion, the one in which he grew up, again, it's been years since he looked at it leisurely like this, the last time was during Ruval's birth, he slowly walked towards the entrance, admiring the beauty of the surroundings, and as he neared the entrance, he took a deep breath before entering it. As he entered, he saw three maids carrying a food trolley towards the garden if his memory served him right, and as soon as they turned toward the entrance. Their faces turned into a shocked expression before their faces turned bright red, he figured out that they most probably knew who he was and signed them to be silent with a smile, and before they could apprehend what had happened, he took the food trolley towards the garden, he also changed appearances, so that he could surprise his parents, though his real wish was that whatever punishment was awaiting him would reduce even a bit. You over there. Please wait. Naruto stopped in his tracks as he heard this voice, because he knows too well who it is, he turned to back to see a petite blonde girl, in a Victorian style dress and a fan in her hand, she looked at him seriously before walking at him with a stern expression. I never saw you in this mansion before, are you a new recruit? Naruto knew where this conversation is going and went on with it, smiling inwardly. Yes, I am a newly appointed butler, I am pleased to be at your service. The girl squinted her eyes at him before suddenly casting fire at Naruto, with an appreciable speed. For someone who had the skill to break into our house and almost sneak up to their owners, you are stupid, there are no butlers at the Fenix house. Ravel looked at the burning body of Naruto, which was still engulfed in flames for some time before walking away, and before she could do it, a cold metallic knife was placed on her neck. For your age, that speed of casting is amazing, and added to that, the famed Fenix flames, not bad, Ravel Fenix, Oh and by the way, I'll make sure I explode this place if you make any noise. Ravel was motionless and shocked, she was completely sure that she got the invader 100%, and the fact that the man is capable of using explosions made her more scared, though she tried to remain calm, her voice wavered. Why you be astered, W who are you? What do you want? What will you do if I tell you? I'll make sure that I stop you, Ravel said sternly, though her voice was still wavering. Hum. I thought to do my work silent and calm but since the youngest Fenix saw me, I can't help it, I am sorry but, it is what it is. The blonde closed her eyes in anticipation of what was to come, a million thoughts ran in her mind, especially of a particular two, her parents, whom she loved since her childhood, though she is about to die, she knew they can protect themselves but that is not the first though of hers, it is about her elder brother whom she had not seen ever, he is a legend in the underworld and literally everybody knows him but her. His tales of bravery in the war and the way how he inspired people made her love him, along with giving her a reason to hate the Gremory house, and that is why she didn't want to die now, she never saw him, she began to conjure one of her finest spells and was about to cast it before. 
Really, the similarities between you and mom go beyond appearances. A. The tone of the voice was completely different from what it was moments ago, warm, gentle, and reassuring, but that one word stuck in her mind. Mom. She knew Ruval's voice though it was gentle, it was not anything like what she just heard, it could not be Riser's voice in a million years, just as she thought the man lied to her, she realized and turned back to see a young man in his early twenties with tanned skin and golden blonde hair that was kept short but was very spiky, he was a completely different man from before and before she could realize it, her eyes watered. N Naruto N Nisama, Naruto smiled nervously and rubbed the back of his head. Ha ha. This is the first time seeing my sister and she really called me the most anticipated word, somehow, I don't know what to say Datbeo. The girl's mind which was going haywire suddenly stopped when she got the reconfirmation, and before she could know it, she was hugging her elder brother and face in his lower chest, Naruto smiled and patted her head, somehow he had been doing that a lot these days. I am sorry that I took this long to see you guys, but I see you have grown splendidly, Ravel. Ravel slowly backed off from the hug, her face still red, she looked up and asked. You are really my Naruto Nisama. Nisama is a little extravagant for me but, yes I am your elder brother Naruto Fenix. Ravel gave one of the most beautiful smiles, one which he had seen countless times on his mother, but suddenly her smile dropped, and her voice lowered. Even though you apologized, isn't seeing your siblings after a decade after their birth isn't too much? In fact she wanted to vent all of her newfound anger on him. There are countless birthdays when she asked her parents whether Big Brother would come or not. Only to be disappointed, many times when she wanted to play with her siblings, only for no one to be found, Riser was a menace since his childhood, many times when she wanted to learn more magic and things and wished that her legendary elder brother would come and help her, only to be left alone to learn, her parents were loving and caring, but some things could only be done effectively when certain people do it. Did you ever think how we all are missing you? Did any thought run through you head to come home and talk with your family? All these years, I always thought of you, whether you are living well, whether you are safe, whether you will visit me, but you never did once. And for what? All for a sorry excuse for a woman who. And that's when Ravel knew she almost crossed the line. The term she was about to use was not like her and it was the first time seeing her elder brother in her life and she lifted the most unwanted topic in front of him, she quickly regained her composure and was about to apologize when pulled into a hug. A. I am sorry. Ravel. I am really sorry. I know this is long due but, I am the one in wrong, leaving my family just because a girl cheated on me is pathetic, and this being the first time talking to you since your birth speaks volumes about my cowardice, but, I swear that whatever life I have in me, ill devoted to looking after you guys, I promise. Naruto was actually close to crying, nobody ever said it out but he knew what he was doing, a long time ago, leaving the most wanted thing he ever wanted just because he was cheated on. Though the situation was exceptional, he knew he was in wrong and his younger sister just pointed out that. Ravel was in his hug was flustered and embarrassed. No. No Naruto ni sama, don't be sorry, something just went off in me and I began to rant, please don't mind me. Naruto pulled her from the hug and gave her a smile. No, I mean everything I said, I'll devote my entire time to you guys, I promise, and I never go back on. Ravel looked in awe at her brother before, really? Yes, for real. Ravel put that beautiful smile back on her face as if she is the happiest woman in the world right at that moment. Now Ravel be, Ravel, who is that person? Naruto momentarily froze when he heard that voice coming from behind him, he knew that voice all too well, Ravel slightly panicked before Naruto signed her to be silent with a smile. The footsteps neared them, is he your friend? Care to introduce? The words stuck in Lord Gremory's mouth as soon as he caught the glimpse of Naruto's face from the side, his eyes widened and slightly watered before slowly looking at his face, the tears which were struggling to fall down did in an instant. S son, H hi dad, Lord Fenix slowly kept his shaky hands on Naruto's shoulders before pulling him into one big hug, Ravel, was clearly shocked, and tears started forming in her eyes as well, the person she thought wouldn't waver under any situation or keeps his calm every time, her father is in tears, on the other hand, Naruto was struggling to keep a calm face, which the lump in his throat is not helping. Lord Fenix pulled back and smiled with a slight sad look. Took you long enough to come back, are we that forgettable to you, son? Naruto couldn't answer him back nor could stop his hurt expression, and just when he was about to speak out. Ha! Huh. Got you this time. This was for all the pranks you played on in your childhood. Lord Fenix laughed at Naruto whose expression was, he got me. Ravel could only watch in shock but also laugh a little, at how jovial her dad is to her older brother, of course, he spoils her a lot but these kinds of talks and jokes were never a part of it. 
It took a few seconds for Naruto to understand what his stepdad did there, and when he did, he could only smile in at his antics. Well, you've got me there dad, aging like a fine wine are we? That we are my son, Lord Fenix smiled and then kept his hands on Naruto's shoulders. Glad you're okay and back son, this house missed you. Naruto smiled, it's good to be back dad, but before we could talk further, where is she? Lord Fenix was confused for a second before realizing, she spends most of her time in the gardens, especially the ones which you and her created during your childhood, she says she feels closer to you whenever she is there. Naruto grimaced, that bad huh? Yeah, that bad, she doesn't show it outside, thanks to all of the disciplinary training the noble houses give during our childhood but, she is in pain son, a lot, and I won't blame you cause of all of that shit pulled by the lucifuge and the gremory but I wish you would have considered our feelings, especially your mother's, you know how frail she is in terms of you. Naruto could only clench his heart and throat as Lord Fenix spoke those words, yes, he knew how his mother was extra affectionate when it came to him, but, right now he didn't even want to make any excuses for his past self, because that changes nothing of what he had done. Again dad, I am sorry, I know it won't change anything but, as of now I will only work towards mending my past wrongs. Lord Fenix chuckled lightly, I know you will son, or else you wouldn't confront your mother now, would you? Now go on, she is waiting for you, for many decades now. Naruto smiled and was about to walk away when, W wait, Naruto ni sama. Ravel caught the sleeve of his shirt, stopping him abruptly, Naruto turned back. Ravel. What is it? Each me, spi, s, Ravel mumbled some words, which Naruto couldn't hear, which if he could, we would have seen a proper Neruhina relationship way back in Ognaruto itself. What? I can't hear you. Ravel ear tips reddened before she clutched her dress tightly and raising her voice. See can and Naruto Nisama please teach me magic spells. Naruto's eyes widened as he looked at Ravel, Ravel looked at Naruto's expression and hastily apologized. I am sorry Nisama. Just forget it, of course you will be busy. Yeah let's do it after I meet our mother shall we? Eh? Ravel couldn't process what Naruto said, are really? Yes, for real, okay, it'll get going now don't want to increase the wrath I am about to face even a bit now, bye. Naruto walked towards the gardens, as Ravel could only look in shock at his back, Lord Fenix chuckled as he saw Ravel's expression. Don't be surprised just by that, as he is back now, you'll see more and more and what a wonderful person your eldest brother is. Ravel could only nod, whether she understood anything. No one knows, the reason why Ravel is surprised is that the person she looked up to all her life just accepted her request of teaching her magic spells, which is the only selfish wish she ever wanted, and also, the way he presented himself is not the stereotypical way the nobles do, that was why she was shocked for the first time when she slipped her mouth about the incident in person, whom she hated by the way, speak like that to any other noble, you are dead meat if you are not from a known pillar. As various thoughts ran through Ravel's mind, Naruto almost reached the entrance to the gardens, he took a deep breath in and out, before entering it, in the distance, which was the center of the garden, he could see a blonde haired woman sitting on a chair, he slowly walked towards her and when she was near her. Sorry, can you guys leave me alone in here, I don't want anyone here now. She was sitting with her back facing toward him, and Naruto slightly smiled. Really? Because I thought the old man in there said you've missed me. Lady Fenix, who was just stirring the tea in her cup until that moment, suddenly froze when she heard that voice, she slowly turned her head towards her back, and he eyes began to run with tears even before she could say anything. Naruto's heart broke when he saw his mother's face, and before he can move, she got up and hugged him tightly and wept in his chest, Naruto couldn't hold the lump in his throat and tears began to fall from his eyes too, though he calmed down and began to comfort his mom. Don't cry mom, please, this stupid son of yours has made a mistake, I am sorry, I won't go anywhere else now. Lady Fenix looked up at him, her eyes reddish, and began to speak. Was it too hard for you to tell me what happened before you left? or is that your way of saying you are just my stepparents? Naruto froze when he heard those words, before slightly recovering and no mom, I never thought like that, you are my parents, no step or anything. Lady Fenix knew she said what she should nt, especially her, but she couldn't keep it in, since he left, her agents and people have been on the search for Naruto and every day, her hope of seeing him again got painful and dimmer, and when she saw him now, all of a sudden, she couldn't help but lash out a powerful spite to make him feel bad. She cupped his face in her hands, if you consider us as a real family, then from now on, please don't hide your feeling from us, I know it's due that sorry excuse of a gremory and that lucifuge but even still, 
From now you keep your family first, and in family I come first okay? Naruto could only smile. Yes, this Naruto Fenix will reveal every inch of my feelings and thoughts to Lady Fenix before anyone. Lady Fenix smiled. Satan knows how many days the last time she did that, she combed his hair with her hands. Your hair looks nice now, it amps your facial features more. Of course, I know you would like it, and why is that? Cuz I don't. Layla. Lady Fenix. Pinched his arm before giggling. Naruto smiled as he saw her laughing again, and then he said with a smile. I am home mom Lady Fenix looked at him warmly, welcome back son. Times kip a few hours, the Fenix mansion got very busy since Naruto came back. All the maids were rushing in and out of every room to keep it in check. The chefs were preparing some of the best dishes as they were personally instructed to by Lady Fenix. She didn't want one thing imperfect today, as her son is back now, and in the midst of all that, Naruto was teaching Ravel some magic spells, that was what Ravel wished, as she was now jogging around the compound in her tracksuit, as she was mainly a strategist and not combat offensive, expect some good spells here and there, she lacked any kind of fitness, though she looks perfect on the outside. Oi Ravel, this is too slow, even kids will run better than, Naruto said as he saw a red-faced, panting, and sweating Ravel on the ground. And Nisama, why you said you will teach me magic spells, and yet you called me here and made me run ten laps around the mansion. Do you think gaining physical foundation isn't good, Ravel? And no, it's just that, I am a strategist and use magic spells, I am not a close combat type. Naruto looked at Ravel for a couple of seconds before. Ravel meet me up at the library after you freshen up, okay? Ravel's eyes lit up, you're going to teach me new spells? Naruto chuckled and petted her head, something like that, will you be there? Yes. While all kinds of things were going on, get your brain out of the gutter, at the Phoenix mansion. Words leaked out that the eldest son of the Phoenix household has returned, it was just a rumor at that stage but when houses closest to the Phoenix house called them, they got the clear news. As Naruto entered the mansion after Ravel's workout, he could see Lord Phoenix smiling as he looked around, he walked towards him and asked. If that smile is towards a maid, you're a busted dad. Lord Phoenix chuckled, no son, I am way past doing that, maybe, but no it's now what I am smiling at. It's been decades since I saw your mother this happy in the mansion this noisy and active. Naruto gave his goofy laugh, yes come on, praise me more, don't mind it, it'll take in any compliments. Don't get cocky brat, Lord Fenix head locked Naruto in his arms. Naruto turned around to see a young blonde man, who looked as if he is in his late twenties, his facial features are strikingly similar to Lord Fenix, except for his eyes which have a gentle look similar to Lady Fenix, Naruto smiled as he realizes who he is. No way that scrawny little brother grew up to be a gentleman. That blonde man was Ruval Fenix, the current next to be head of the Fenix house, Ruval Brisk walked towards Naruto and hugged him tight. Aniki, you are finally back, thanks Satan, Naruto smiled at his words, yeah I am back, Naruto pulls back from the hug and has a good look at his brother. Man I knew it when you were born but, I am pretty sure you only got the best of our parents' genes. Ruval gives an embarrassed smile before asking, Aniki, are you really all right now, or will you go back again? Naruto gave a cheeky smile, who? Since when did I fall off so bad that my younger brother has to worry for me? Ruville gave a sincere smile before saying, I guess when you left the house without any warning 90 years ago. Did this guy seriously think that he, the younger brother get away from Mike dropping on his older brother, well, it ain't a kind world for the younger siblings. Norto pulled Ruville into a headlock and was nudging his sides at the same time. You ain't a kid no more, I could use the most disgusting moves known to devil and get away with it, such a cheeky words from a younger brother eh? Ruvil was laughing and crying out in pain at the same time before tapping three, Naruto let him out to let Ruvil catch his breath. Why you didn't see change at all Aniki, Ruvil said as he was trying to catch his breath. Naruto laughed at that with Ruvil joining him, such a beautiful scene of brotherhood. Ruvil slowly stopped laughing and his tone grew slightly worrisome. Will you go back again Aniki? Naruto chuckles at Ruval's tone, don't worry, I want, what I did back then is nothing short of pathetic and cowardice, all I managed to do is cause trouble for our house, I, realized some important things and even found some on the way, which cleared my rusty brain. Ruval smiled at his brother's words, for him, Naruto and his parents are one of the core existences in his life, what he is today was mainly thanks to how Naruto taught him in his childhood, never give up, stand up for yourself, and resorting to violence doesn't solve anything and many more important lessons, Though Naruto said it to him casually the weight behind those words struck Ruval. 
but his respect skyrocketed when Naruto led forces against the old faction to victory, yet he denied the Lucifer seat and offered it to his close friend, Srizex. Sirzex. Ruvel's mood suddenly darkened at that name, which is common to all of his household. A betrayal to his closest friend in one of the vile ways, to sleep with his lover, and he remembers that day when Naruto left quite clearly, as it had happened yesterday, as soon as the news broke out that Naruto and Sirzex were fighting, he ran to the location although he was too late, his brother was already gone, and after many days of the Phoenix household worrying over the fact that their eldest has not returned, the reason for the fight came out. There was quite a rift caused between many sides of the houses as Sirzex was a Satan. But in the end, they agreed to keep the news between the elders as the last thing they wanted was instability which the rebels may take advantage of, as for Graphia, she had never even tried to make contact with the Phoenix household, which irked him a lot, the friendly relationship between the Gremory and Phoenix has thinned down a lot due to that and the final straw was when Graphia gave birth to Sirzex's son. Since then, it has been a strictly business relationship only, of course, he became the new next heir of the Phoenix house and started to work on it, which he did quite quickly and made a good name for himself and his family, and one thing which Ruval never doubted is that his brother will never abandon them, he could feel it in his bones that his brother was watching over his family during the birth of his siblings and today, he realized again that what he thought was true. Ni Sama. Both Ruval and Naruto looked towards the voice and it was Ravel, who freshened up after that marathon around the mansion. Oh Ravel, did you meet our big brother here? Ruval asked. Ravel replied with a proud smile, I was the first to meet him, Ruval Ni Sama, and also, he promised me to teach many magic spells too. Eh? Ruval who was smiling as brightly as the sun couple of second ago, froze. Ravel. Did Aniki said he's gonna teach you magic spells? Ruval asked with a questioning yet cautious tone. Yes, why? And did he start off by making you run around the mansion? Yes. I did tell him that I am a strategist but he didn't stop until I finished it. Ruval looked towards Naruto with a don't tell me it is what I think it is look to which Naruto gave a toothy grin and a stay calm look. Ruval gave a pity look towards Ravel and patted her shoulder, good luck, Ravel. Ravel didn't seem to understand and gave a hearty reply, yes. Poor girl, she doesn't know what she is getting into, Ruval muttered under his breath. You guys don't know how happy I and your mother are seeing you like this, for the first time ever, Lord Fenix walked towards them with a smile. Way to go to rub salt on me dad, Naruto chuckled. Well you got years worth of salt due to be rubbed on you young man, but first, let's have food, your mother personally checked everything for your sake. Naruto forced a smile at that comment, his mother can sometimes be overbearing, but he isn't complaining, after all, we only know the value of something once we lose it or in Naruto's case, who never had it. The Fenix house had a hearty lunch for the first time in years, especially Lady Fenix, since her elder son's disappearance, dining time has been always a dull, grey time during the day, but now, she feels full both physically and mentally, Ruval felt nostalgic and Ravel, while well she is on cloud nine as she is eating at the same table with her favourite person. After lunch. So Aniki, when are you going to take over your work as the next head of the house? Ruval asked as Naruto and he was sitting under the shade of their favorite tree in their garden. Naruto looked surprised for a minute, what do you mean? Ruval's look grew confused, huh, isn't it obvious that you were going to take over the works of our house as the eldest? Why are you surprised? Naruto gave a oh I get it look and smiled, about that Ruval, I think you are the correct fit than me. A. Eh? What do you mean a? Eh? Do you think it will be wise for me to take over your position as the head of the house when you put in so much hard work for years? If I do. That's me being a shit elder brother and a super unethical asshole. But, and also, you don't realize it but you are more suitable for that role than me, I am a guy who wears his emotions on his sleeve and tends to act on it, but you are a cool-headed Eichmann who thinks things through and comes to the correct decision. Ruval eyes slightly widened at Naruto's details of him, well can't blame a him when his role model is praising him, after a long time too that is. Well, I get what you are saying but I still feel uneasy about this Aniki, this is too sudden I guess. Naruto looked at him for a couple of seconds and said. Are you worried about what other houses think or something like that? In that case. It's not that Aniki, it's just that I have worked hard to this day thinking that you would have a smooth transition when becoming the head of the house, but I never had the thoughts about taking the position. Ruvil had a thoughtful look while saying this, Naruto sighed before bonking Ruvil's head. Ouch. What was that for? You seemed to cool while saying that line and it pissed me off. Naruto said as it was a matter of fact to which Ruval could just say ehhh. Ruval, Naruto continued, there are just a few things I believe wholeheartedly that won't go wrong and you being the head of our house is one of them, 
you are different from other nobles who crave power just for the sake of it, and I will help you until you become confident, like I did when you rode your first cycle, though I am sure that you're gonna ace it even without help. Then all of a sudden, Ruvil stood up and looked at Naruto with a serious expression. Aniki, I, I don't know if I could bring fame and glory as you did back in the day but I would certainly want let the Phoenix house to fall down. Naruto smiled at him, idiot, you are better than that, don't settle for scraps, but for now this is good enough. Ruvil nodded while taking in a deep breath, by the way Aniki, what are you going to do with Ravel? Naruto had a questioning look, again. What do you mean by what ill do? Isn't that obvious, ill train her normally as I did to you. Okay first of all, what you did to me is borderline torture, second, do you really think it's necessary for a strategist like Ravel to become good at learning attacks and whatnot? I am gonna pretend I didn't hear your first sentence, and yes I do think it is necessary to get her strong, irrespective of her role. Why is that? I have countless reasons but here are a few, first of all it doesn't hurt to get yourself to be strong, it's always a positive, second, what's gonna happen if her strategy fails and she is the last person left to protect her king? She's gonna be a nuisance then. Ruvel pondered for a bit and then smiled at his brother's reasons, this is how his brother is, he is the most unorthodox guy among all of the nobility and even maybe all of the devils, devils don't spend their energy and time on what ifs and things that they think they are not good at, for example, a rook doesn't train its speed because their primary output is offense and defense, which is weird considering that most of the rooks are vulnerable to speed types. But his brother here, is completely different, he wants to train a bishop, Ravel, whose role consists of strategy mainly in a few magic spells at the most, as someone who can do any role. As usual, the level of thinking of my Aniki is on a completely different level. I think I still got a lot to learn from you Aniki. Naruto snorted, of course you do, you got another three to four lifetimes before you can be at my level. Can't you say you are already there at least for formality? Now now where is the fun in that? Ruval laughed, he missed this a lot. Naruto got up. Now if you'll excuse me, I got an appointment with my little sister in a few minutes, gotta brush up on that teaching persona I used on you. Go. Easy on her, unlike when you did to me, but I did go easy on you though. After a good session of exercise for Ravel. All the Phoenix household is sitting in their garden for their tea time, which for the first time in years is looking good. By the way where is that riser, I sent the word for him hours ago? Lady Phoenix asked. Now you say it, I have been wondering about it too, where is our little brother? Naruto asked too. Lord Phoenix answered, don't worry about him I am pretty sure he did get our word but is out there somewhere, though it's concerning that he doesn't listen to our words sometimes. Don't worry dad, hell get around. He is just a teenager, Ruval consoled. He is too complacent for a teenager, you two were disciplined at his age and even Ravel is growing up like you, I wonder what went wrong with him, Lord Fenix sighed. In Lord Fenix's opinion, Riser has everything that a noble has but twofold, his power is not too bad for his age but his arrogance and behavior stand out in him. Naruto looking at his dad's face replied, don't worry dad, I'll talk to him and see what you are so concerned about. Yeah, I'll leave it to you. Guess Hell at least listened to his eldest brother. Naruto is well aware of his youngest brother's antics, a peerage full of ladies which clearly shows his motive, arrogance fitting for a high class devil and some more shitty ones which he would prefer not to speak, but the thing Naruto is afraid of is his brother's ignorance, that's maybe bliss for most humans but definitely not a good thing for a high class devil like him. Okay. Okay stop this discussion, problems can be solved afterward but for now, my son what did you do in your time in the human world? Layla asked as she set down her cup. Well, I roamed around many countries and did a whole lot of nothing except meditation. Guess it really helped me a lot, it made me see what are my priorities, and that stupid Azazel was on my tail all the time, asking for random favors which I turned down, but recently he asked me a strange favor. What was that? Ruval asked, Naruto paused for a bit and said, he asked me to monitor a member of the Gremory Heiress Peerage. It was like the air around the table got a bit stiff as everyone's eyes widened at Naruto's response, Layla tightened her grip around her cup's handle. So, why did he ask you knowing you'll turn it down? Naruto slightly smiled and answered, I didn't turn it down. The handle of the cup broke and the cup fell down as soon as Layla listened to his answer, and before she could say anything Naruto continued. Calm down mom, I don't care about the Gremory's plans or whatever, I accepted it because the newest member whom she recruited is this generation's Red Dragon Emperor. Once again, the eyes around the table widened this time in surprise. Wow, she actually got a rare find huh? Ruval muttered. Yeah, that's why Azazel was interested in him and also, 
his intuition apparently said that Red Dragon Emperor is going to be at the center of all the events which will take place in the future and that's why he wanted me to have an eye on him if possible. Well I don't blame him, after all the White Dragon Emperor is his subordinate and also more like his adopted son, Lord Fenix said. And as the current talk is about what Naruto did in the human world, he thought that this would be the perfect time to reveal that matter. And about the other things I did back there, I have a wife. This time, Ravel, Layla, and Lord Fenix coughed as they heard Naruto's words, as for Ruval, he was surprised but immediately broke into a smile. You are married? When did that happen? Naruto smiled and replied. Well, technically she isn't my wife yet but I am planning to propose to her, very soon. The other three Fenigs regained their composure and Lord Fenix asked. Where is she now? She is still up there, I checked in with her before coming here. Why don't you bring her here? Ruval asked. Here comes the nervous part, Naruto thought. About that, she has some responsibilities up there which she can't just leave like that and also, I just wanted to tell you in person instead of suddenly us three showing up here just like that. Layla was confused. What do you mean not wanting to show up all of a sudden? You three. Three? It seems the others understood what Naruto meant by three, a tad bit quickly before Layla, Layla Fenix slowly opened her mouth. D do you mean that? Naruto scratched the back of his head while slightly smiling. Yes, mom, I have a child, a daughter to be precise. It was like time froze and nobody moved for a couple of moments, which made Naruto sweat slightly, Lord Fenix was the first one to recover and he locked his arm around Naruto's neck and hugged him. My son, you sure are one heck of a guy huh? having a child before marriage? Ruvil too joined in the fun as he was elbowing with all his might into Naruto's chest as if he was quenching the thirst for revenge for all of his rigorous teachings during his childhood, Ravel was panicking as if she doesn't know what to do. As Naruto was gasping for air, suddenly the mood around a certain place in that area darkened, the four who were engrossed in teasing Naruto, noticed it and calmed down as soon as possible, Naruto, who thought he wouldn't face the one thing he didn't want to, tensed up, Lord Fenix silently got up and signed Ravel and Ruval to come with him, and before leaving Naruto who was giving him a please help me look, he turned away as if saying sorry. Naruto expected this from Ravel, you heard me right Ravel, this won't be enough when you officially become a mature devil and I'll tell you why, first, since you don't get into the rating games in depth thanks to your peerage's prowess, you can sit out and plan the strategies and that may work, but when you are forced to get into the battlefield, it will be a whole different story, people will be aiming for the weakest link first, which will be you if you don't have enough skill. But Nisama isn't that why I am asking you to? Yes, I know, I know you want to improve your magic arsenal, but Ravel I gotta tell ya, you have to train like no other if you don't wanna be a weak link in the chain, and you won't see the results anytime close to what you had in your mind. Ravel's eyes widened at that comment from her brother, she went quite thanks to the reality check she got and her face went slightly blue, well, it is one thing a random man saying she can't do it but her idol saying this without pulling back anything was too much for her, just as she was about to give in to the despair. That's if you decide to learn the game by sitting on the sidelines, Naruto said. A. Hey. Naruto smiled at her, as of now, your battle experience is zero isn't it? To which Ravel was about to refuse when, and I am not talking about your usual sitting on the sides with Riser as his peerage did all the dirty work, to which she wasn't able to refute. So. To get you on the fast track to becoming formidable foe on the battlefield I have a suggestion, Naruto said. Ravel's droopy eyes two minutes ago lit up, really? What is the Nisama? You have to be an active participant in the battle, no more watching from the sitting out from the action in the name of Stardegist, Naruto said in a no-bullshit tone. Ravel, was obviously surprised at that suggestion, it's not that she isn't willing to try, but the but the very thought of herself battling with the risk of her getting hurt is making her numb, Naruto knew what she was thinking. What? Your resolve weakened at the mere fact that you have to go through a thorny path in order to get the power you desire. There is no free lunch in this world Ravel, especially in the devil society, if you want to accomplish your aim, then you have to face the cold reality. Ravel still had that mixture of grim and shocked look on her face, Naruto thought. Did I come out too hard on her? Before he decided to lighten her mood, Ravel stood up with a determined look on her face. Nisama, I understand. Maybe I was naive in thinking becoming a master at work is easy when I have an accomplished person like you but seems like reality isn't that gentle, I will go through any training regimen you give in order to become the person I want to be. If Naruto was shocked, which he is by the way, didn't show it on his face, then he smiled, though it carried a bit sadism in it. Oh, that's cheeky. Guess I was too soft on you previous exercises, it's only fair to amp up the intensity. 
Ravel's face turned slightly blue, as he cursed her previous words. What did I get myself into? And so went a week or so since Naruto's return, even though the news about his return has spread throughout the underworld on the last weekend, he didn't even bother trying to meet any of his old friends or nobles, all he did was train Ravel, lent a helping hand to Ruval becoming the head of the house and spent time with his parents, he had enough experience living alone, again, thanks to a certain red-haired asshole. And also he sat down with his mother and drank loads of his mother's favorite tea in their garden. He didn't dare to complain because what he had last week is more than enough, at the same time, he deployed his shadow clones to keep an eye on Yusaka and Issei, though he did the latter purely because he didn't want Azazel on his tail again, the last update was that the Gremory Peerage had some kind of competition against Seraphal's sister Peerage for choosing familiars as both of the groups got new members at the same time period. Currently, Naruto was going towards his youngest brother's house, well, it is the part of the Fenig's house but Riser apparently wanted the half of the east side of the mansion for himself and his peerage, he did try to meet Riser a couple of times in the past week but apparently he was preparing for one of his raiding games in a faraway district and just returned yesterday, he was informed of his brother's return and accepted to meet him as soon as possible. And as Naruto reached the entrance of the east side, he knocked the door. Please come in, said a slightly gruff male voice. Naruto entered into a room which was more or less identical to his study, and in the behind the table stood a tall and handsome young man in his early twenties with short blonde hair and dark blue eyes. His outfit consists of a burgundy blazer with gold embroidery on the right with matching pants and black dress shoes, underneath his open blazer is a white dress shirt that is not fully buttoned, just one button short, giving a slight view to his chest. Naruto had a long clear look at his younger brother, while the latter was looking at him with a strange look, then he smiled. I thought there would be no bad boy type in this family except me, glad to see that I am wrong. Riser didn't speak for a moment, as if he was deciding what response to choose in one of those Eroge, Galja, Naruto snapped his fingers. You alive there little brother? Riser seemed to snap out of it and answered in a surprisingly calm and respectful tone, I am sorry, it's just that you don't meet a living legend every day. Naruto was surprised, didn't dad say he was more of a delinquent? Why are you going all formal on your brother? Talk normally, said Naruto as he and Riser took a seat. Riser contemplated for a minute or so before speaking, thanks brother, I was just worried that I would leave a bad first impression. I don't care about those with my family, especially with my younger brother whom I am meeting for the first time, Naruto said with a smile. And as if those words took away a load of weight over Riser, he smiled, I know you get this a lot or used to but I really admire you big brother. Now this is another surprise for Naruto, where did the all hottie? egoist young master of the Phoenix clan go? I am actually surprised hearing this from you, from what I heard from dad, you didn't answer his calls when he called you regarding my return. Riser laughed nervously, I was afraid he was gonna give me another lecture about how I should be more like you and Ruval big brother. Naruto laughed, I won't say don't mind those words but don't let it get to your heart, I am me, Ruval is Ruval and Riser is Riser, it would be pretty bland if we had the same traits and behavior don't you think? Riser laughed as if he envisioned three Phoenix brothers of same looks and behavior. Naruto looked at him for a couple of minutes and asked, It's fair to say I am surprised, Riser. Thanks for watching.